you know, I do a lot with, with Facebook, right? And I found that to be really, really great for my business because uh, on a couple different levels, the first thing that's really cool about it is people start recognizing you everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I would probably say about once every other day now, I have some complete stranger who just asked me if, if I'm that, that real estate guy, which, you know, is a, is a really, really good feeling overall, right? And I, I hired a, a real estate coach to actually teach me how to, how to do this overall blueprint. I'm a firm believer in having a real estate coach. When I first got into the business, I, w I joined um, the number one team in my territory. And what I loved about that is I had the opportunity to learn from all these really brilliant people, right? And just really jumpstart my career overall. When that team disbanded back in June of 2018, I went on and uh, became an independent agent, went 100% commission versus the old 50-50. Yep. And what I learned after about six months of, of still kind of doing what I was doing at the first brokerage is it was a hamster wheel, right? Like I was prospecting people all, all the time. I was calling people for an hour, half, two hours a day, which I actually firmly believe in. I, I built a really great book of business doing it that way, right? There's a lot to be said for that. And one of my favorite books is Fanatical, Prospector, Fanatical, Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blount. Um, and it's really phenomenal. But what I realized was I was going to have to continue doing the exact same thing that I was doing moving forward. And it would always be every day from nine to 11 prospecting and focusing on that, that lead generation. And when I called these people, like they didn't know me from Adam, right? They didn't know who I was. I was just some random person calling them. So my credibility was, was way, way low at that point, right? No, I, I know what I'm talking about right. and, and I can, I can really help people. And I firmly believe that, you know, I can provide the best service. I, I do believe that. But what I found was, you know, one day I was, it was 2018 and I was just thinking about buying a new calendar. Right. Um, and now Facebook started showing up with all these calendars on Amazon and actually had my dog's personal breed on the calendar photo, right? And I'm like, I'm like, how did they do that? So what I, what I did is I actually hired a real estate coach. Her name is Krista Mayshore, uh, Krista Mayshore Coaching. She's got a really great um, $100 program out there. I think it's like, it's called Three Clients in 30 Days. Nice. And you can kind of get a, a teaser for her, her overall training, what she does. But I learned the blueprint from her. And her idea is to release, you know, two to three videos a week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I pay a professional editor to do that. I'm, I'm all about leverage. You know, I, I tell people I work probably about 25 hours a week. I don't really like okay. doing um, more than, like, I love my job. I, I absolutely love the creative aspect of it. I love working with my clients. But if I'm not good at something, you're like, I'm not a design person, right? I'm going to hire someone to take care of that. And with the access to online information nowadays, you can reach out to people on Fiverr, on Freelancer, on any multitude of different platforms, and they'll do it for really, really cheap. Okay. So yeah. first off, can you send me that link for the coach when we're done with it? Yeah, yeah, I'll share that here with you at the end so you can have that. And then if you want to send a link over for the editor too, that editor is doing a great job on your videos. Yeah. Thank you. So um, I actually don't share who my uh, editor is specifically. Fair enough. Uh, that's, that's one of those things where I keep them very busy. Okay. Uh, I've actually got uh, four different editors. So I got two that are local and I got two that are um, in different countries, actually. And, you know, I, I've seen people like one of my local guys, he charges 90 bucks for a one minute to finish content. Right. Then I got a, a guy in Jamaica who do it for 40 bucks. I got a guy in Austria who do it for 40 bucks. And the guy in Austria is just crushing it lately. So okay. depending on who's doing really, really well, I'll give them more business. Right. And when I did it on freelancer, I just explained to the people when I was hiring them that you're going to get a lot of business from me, right? Like, so I'm not going to be paying you 120 bucks for a minute of finished content, but I'll be giving you four or five projects a week. And I like doing it that way because then I can, um, I can, I, I like to batch record, which is I'll, I'll write up like four or five scripts that I really like. And, and what I'll do is I'll funnel out different target audiences. So I have my client avatars, right? People that I'm, I'm focusing on, on speaking to. I have my buyer clients, my buyer funnel, my seller funnel. Um, I actually call them move up buyers, you know? Um, not so much sellers, because a lot of people start with the, the buying before they actually move to, set, to, to selling. And if you can actually present an offer in a way to them that, hey, I can help you find homes that when we go into the market, we can sell fast and get you in the home right away, right? So a lot of people get nervous about the whole, oh, I have to sell before I buy. So having conversations about that is huge. 
Um, so buyers, sellers, I also do a lot of new construction. And then I also have one that's a little bit more long-term um, that's targeting people specifically with credit repair. So I have, I have seven different videos out there and I try to keep my content less than a minute. Um, I actually think that that's a really good blessing with Facebook is if you talk too much, people will stop paying attention. But if you keep it under a minute or around 90 seconds, that's enough time where someone's like, oh, I can give this guy enough time to actually watch the video, right? And get some, some good value out of it. But the goal is to constantly be showing up in, in front of these people. So when you create a funnel for buyers, you wanna retarget to them every week with one new video towards, uh, uh, towards buyers so that they constantly see you and every time they see you, you're giving value. You're not out there saying, oh, I'm the greatest real estate agent in the world. I'll sell your home in seven hours or longer or whatever. You know, but it's, it, it's actually showing them some new perspective or idea. I think as real estate agents, we get, we get, we're, we're stuck in this, right? Like we're doing real estate every day. At least if you're not, you should be right. Um, and we forget that buyers and sellers and the consumers don't know a lot of what we're talking about. Right. Um, did you know, like when you're talking to someone who's looking to build a home, it's like you can, act, there's an easier way to shop contractors for new construction. It's very difficult to look online and try to find a really good builder who can actually help you um, get the home that you want because they're trying to sell you their specific product. And what we can do is we can actually set it up so that we can schedule model home visits with contractors that are skilled in your style and floor plans so that we can actually save you time and money and therefore make it this an overall much smoother process and even save you money if we can select our own subcontractors. Mm -hmm. So, and then I think about, you know, when I, before I got into the business, which, you know, I've only been in for three years, 20, 2016 was, was yeah. when I joined. Um, I, am a, I am a broker now, I'm a broker associate, I have a, a primary. But uh, when I, two months before I got my real estate license, I didn't even know buyer's agents existed. I, I, I didn't know that that was a, a, a thing. I thought it was like going to a car dealership, right? And you go to that, you go to a Dyna Realty or Remax Results and, and they'll show you their Remax Results or a Dyna listings. And like, we know that that's not a thing. Right. So I always kind of reflect back on that. Like people don't know what they don't know. And our job is to present that to them in a short bite-sized piece. They're like, hey, he gave me good value last time. Here's a new video. Let's see what he has to say here. And then just kind of entice them with, with offers throughout, you know, like if they're a buyer, uh, say something along the lines of, you know, we can get you access to off market properties that are not yet on the MLS, right? Mm -hmm. um, by having an audience of sellers who are already actively engaging and, and, and looking to sell maybe in the next year in that neighborhood, I can actually take your qualification as a buyer and market to those sellers and show them I have a qualified buyer looking in your neighborhood and can actually get you your house sold without you having to deal with all of those showings and everything like that. Now um, you got to be careful with that, right? You don't want to go out there and, and market homes. You're not, you're not because it's illegal for, well, it's not illegal. It's against the rules mm -hmm. for us to do um, pocket listings, right? And that's not what the goal is here. I'm representing my, my buyer client, right? I'm helping my buyer find a home. Mm -hmm. Now, am I going to charge a higher commission to the seller to bring that buyer in? Probably there's a convenience fee involved there with me, you know, bringing them a buyer without them having to go to the market, if that makes sense, right? Okay. Let me ask a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. So you use Facebook, you're using basically most of the business from video that's coming to you is all through Facebook, you'd say? Um, yeah, so I get, uh, I, I no, not all my business. So I still use Commissions Inc. I was not ready to completely turn off the faucet on the prospecting business. You know, I, I had uh, three and a half years in, um, in a call center. So being on the phone was really, really easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, I have completely stepped off of that pedal um, in the last six months though, just because what I love about the Facebook stuff is those people reach out to me when they're ready. Okay. I've had people who met me two and a half years ago that I would never remember, but because they see my videos all the time, they reach out to me like, Hey, we met one time um, over at, you know, Pappy's having a couple drinks. Um, but I see your videos all the time and I want you to, to come out and take a look at my home list the property, help them buy one, you know, makes a good chunk of change. Right. So, so real quick. Um, mm -hmm. so the way you're following up with them, it's mostly through retargeting where when they're online, they just videos are popping up or are you capturing their information and sending them like weekly emails and newsletters? So I do both of those things, right. With commissions, I get the cell phones and the emails. And what I'll do is I'll take the email and I'll upload that into Facebook. 
um, so that it actually targets those people. You can actually create, um, it's not look-alike audiences anymore because we're in um, real estate, so we have to do housing with special ads category. So you can create a special ads category retarget of people similar to that, that actually get them in there as well. Um, people who've gone to your website, I pixel people all the time, and I do that when I'm talking to, you know, for sale by owners, expired. If I'm in a conversation with someone, I'm like, hey, let me send you over this link. So I'll just use a short bit.ly link that reroutes them to that website that'll pixel them. So now my stuff starts showing up all the time, right? Now, um, there, is, there is a process for, for all of this, right? You know, Facebook's got to think about a dozen different objectives on, on what they do. And I usually run anywhere between eight and 15 ads at a time. It just depends on what I'm specifically trying to, to accomplish, right? With, um, so what I did following Krista Mayshore's blueprint was I did uh, 30 days of reach um, for buyers, for sellers, for every different funnel that I have out there. Um, and with those videos, you really want to keep those like 20 seconds to 30 seconds because reach is like casting a net. It's that shotgun approach out there. And you're going to collect people that are really interested. Uh -huh. Then I did two weeks of brand awareness. And then I would do two weeks to 30 days of you know, video views and then officially just run out with lead gen. So I'm constantly given all this, this, this new information. And what I love about it is, you know, I got probably about a hundred videos now and I'm still creating about three to five new videos a week. Okay. Is if I really want to, I can go back and um, run one of those videos again. Now I probably wouldn't do that because the more that you do the videos, the more you look back on things that you did four, four or five months ago, you're like, man, that's awful. Right. Um, that was going to be one of my questions though. Do you think, cause you have very polished videos. Do you think having some of the more rougher cut videos would actually benefit you and, uh, just to add authenticity? Yes. Yes, it does. Actually. I, I run probably about one or two off the cuff videos, um, every month. And, and it's one of those things that I think is really, really more powerful, honestly, because people get to see, um, you from a different level. I like doing the, the, the more polished videos though too, because I think that words matter. And I like being able to write out a 200, 300 word script, put it on a teleprompter and read through that in a way that's presentable so that it's getting information out to people really, really fast. Right okay. now, when I, as you can tell, when we're talking, like I, I kind of talk around in circles and touch on a bunch, a bunch of different things at the same time. It's not as linear. Um, but I do find that that is helpful. One thing that I found that that works to make it seem more off the cuff, but not exactly is use like big Voo on your cell phone, which is a free app. Okay. You can upload scripts to there. If you're going to do it, try to keep it between 60 seconds, 90 seconds. Okay. And then I'll just read through that script and it looks like you're looking at the camera and it looks like it's more off the cuff, right? So that people can kind of see those things. Um, but yes, I definitely see the value in, in the more, um, you know, authentic looking videos, I suppose. Have you gotten listing appointments just specifically because they like what you're presenting from the marketing aspect on video? Yes. Yes. So I definitely, um, it's, so there's a, there's a couple really cool things that I can offer that, that other agents simply can't. Right. So, um, one thing that I offer to my seller clients is that uh, I mean, you know how, you know, marketing your home can give you like a distinct advantage, advantage over the competition. And what I say is I have a strategic digital marketing strategy that I have an online audience of over 40,000 Rochester area locals who have been searching in this area and really engaging in the last year and a half that I can actually take your listing, your 90 second video. I can put that in front of that audience and create lookalike audiences off them or I guess special ads category now. Um, and in the first 24 hours, I can get more hours of video views than there is time in a day. So it's not uncommon for me in the first 24 hours to get 30 to 40 hours of video views on one property listing, right? right? So when I say that to, to sellers, I'm like, I can put your home in front of buyers who are already shopping. And guess what? The average Facebook user is on Facebook 58 minutes a day. Um, I can retarget to them specifically and 77% of home buyers are using social media in their home search nowadays. Right. And it's all about repurposing to, you know, I'm still using YouTube and Google and, and all that stuff, but are you Facebook using the Google ads right now for YouTube? 
Um, no, not yet. The the Google ads are the result on that. YouTube ads through Google. But I that's I just got my final video. I think I shared a couple with you a couple days ago about mm -hmm. what I got back. So my first one is actually set to to be released this Friday. So I'm really really excited about it. But it's already budgeted out. Do you months. have a main competitor in your marketplace that you see that you uh, come up against a lot? Um, so I'm, I'm not the top producer in my area yet. Um, it is one of the things that I, I am shooting for and that's why I hire, you know, coaches. I, my biggest expense is personal development. And I think that's important. You have to invest in your business. I think it's bizarre that I see agents all the time who are like, I'm not going to spend any money on, uh, on my business at all. And it's like, that's what makes us business owners. And if you aren't actually investing in yourself and your business and actually marketing your clients, whether it's listings or buyers, you're not providing real service to, to your clients. And there's really no differentiator between hiring you over any other agent. And that's just, just really important. But as far as, you know, with the videos that I run, do I have competitors in that space? No, there's no one doing what I'm doing with, with videos. Okay. I would say there's three other people in my territory who are running ads mm -hmm. um, and they're just image ads. I see maybe one who will release a video or see, one a team that will re release like a quarterly video that they'll put out there about their team and how great they are um and then for me i mean that's my tuesday morning right so uh, it's, it's not it's not and and the beautiful thing about it is i mean you look back at my older videos they are there the, the the editing is great the audio is not as good my presentation skills are a little bit more um, jumpy, <laughs> I want to say. So I, I've slowed down a little bit and, and gotten more calm with people because I want to be branded as someone who gives guidance and good information. Right. And that's just who I, I want to be known for with my clients. Yes. But um, as far as competitors in this space, no. And, and I think that's what differentiates what I do and what the people in the same program that I am in with the, with the Facebook marketing is what differentiates us is I heard a statistic on a podcast, and I don't know if it's if it's legitimate or not. But what they had said is is eighty five percent of consumers can only name, or eighty percent of consumers can only name one real estate agent. Fifteen percent can name two, and five percent can name three or more. And we're pretty sure that that five percent are real estate agents, yeah. right? So and what this probably, does, but uh, you probably heard that story, Keller Williams, in that red book they did. They uh, did a poll, and the exercise was. Can we make up a fictional uh, real estate agent, market him, and him be the number one agent in top of mind? And they were able to do that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, just a couple of uh, direct mails. I think they did like 10. And all of a sudden, everyone said there he was the top agent in the whole city. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing about constantly showing up, right? There are people in the same program that I'm in that have never sold a home and they got recognized as the top agent in their, in their territory. I've seen it happen. Um, and so, I mean, obviously their business is blown up now, but at that point, you know, they hadn't. But it, it, what it does is since you're constantly showing up in front of people, they can't ignore you. You're always giving good information. So at least they're going to be able to name two agents. And guess what? They're seeing one of us a lot more than the other one. What would you say your ad spend is a day on Facebook? Um, a day, I would say, well, I know my monthly is 1500 right? And I try to keep it around that. And sometimes it fluctuates, right? It just depends on, on what I want to do with that. So $1,500 for the, the ad spend, uh, divide that by 30. What's that? 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, and, and how I, do you measure that? Are you measuring that by leads? Like to know if it's successful, is it leads, appointments? Mm -hmm. How are you justifying it? So with Commissions Inc, I, I get anywhere between, you know, 100 and 150 leads a, a month. And that's all buy side. And now I pay an ISA service to prospect those for me. Okay. I probably get about two, three deals from that. And then from Facebook, what it does is I just have people who they can't ignore me. When I first started running these ads for the first 30 days, even when it was just reach, I got about four times as many referrals. Okay. And it was because people who know me, friends, family, people who had seen me in the past, they, they, they constantly see me showing up because they can't ignore me anymore. Right. Okay. Uh, nowadays I'll have people who will reach out to me just on Facebook, on messenger. They'll shoot me a text message. They'll fill out one of my lead forms. And when I talk to them, it feels like they already know me. Fair right. Because right. They've already seen my videos. They know what I'm about. Um, the beautiful thing about going to a listing appointment is everyone's just like, I feel like I already know you. Mm -hmm. 
and I have a, I, 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 I'm an avid reader. I can see you are too. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I, 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 that's, that's my thing. Um, uh, there was a really, I, mean, I don't know if you read John Maxwell, uh, this morning I was at one of their conferences. Talk about some amazing content. My yeah. Goodness. Yeah. John Maxwell's the man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm reading, um, Jack Canfield's, uh, the success principles right now. I usually go through about two, three books a week. It's, it's one of my, my biggest passions. Um, I'm, I'm really, I really do believe in leverage. I tell people I work about 25 hours a week. Uh, I do. Uh -huh. um, but I guess that's, that's kind of unfair too, because, you know, when I'm reading a book or when I'm learning, like that's fun to me, right? So it doesn't really feel mm -hmm. like work. And I feel as, as you do this more and you get more and more business kind of just kind of coming into you, you're able to focus more on what it is that you do like to do. Okay. Uh, there's a, there's still a lot of things that, that I have to, to do yet. Right. Like I don't do every door direct mailings yet. <laughs> uh, it's another thing that's, that's on the agenda, but I slowly work those things out. Master mm -hmm. Google with sync, mastering Facebook, working on YouTube right now. Okay. going to do, get into the every door direct mailers. Right. So uh, there's always these kind of steps in the process that you're going through. Okay. And the big thing is figuring out what you're good at and then leveraging the things that you're not good at or the things that are just, taking too much time. And ISAs, how long have you been using an ISA? Since, I want to say April of last year. And I've gone through a couple of them. Okay. Personally, I think the best bet is to find an ISA of your own. And they don't have to be local. Okay. Um, but find, go freelancer, go Fiverr, tell them what you expect, show them a little bit about your branding, how you want them to reach out to clients. You don't want an ISA, it's like, do you have an agent? And you, come on, you want to be like, oh, hey, here's, here's, by the way, here's a short video. Um, that Alex recorded regarding this if you have time to watch it and they'll market to them that way, right? I always use it like customer service instead of Yeah, that. yeah. Now, um, I don't have an ISA like that right now, but I see the power in it, right? And so that's why I say that there's always different things that, that you can and I hate to interrupt you, but that's one interesting thing. You know, I, I definitely believe in ISAs, but you're building so much personal rapport. Mm -hmm. If they feel like all of a sudden they're being sold to, mm -hmm all of a sudden that could really take you backwards. Right, right. So a video a week from you, uh, mm -hmm. that's pretty good, uh, you know, rapport building right there. Yeah, so the Commissions Inc. stuff goes to the ISAs because mm -hmm. I'm not ready to shut off that faucet yet, right? So that's like the Google AdWords that they're just saying, I want to buy a home in your city. They haven't seen your video? Yeah, something like that. They, they search homes in, in my city or the surrounding communities, comes to that website. They fill out their information, and that goes to the ISAs. Now, if someone's engaged with my Facebook content, that comes to me directly, um, and I'll reach out to them in, in, in my timely manner. And, and I have three core values that uh, really show up in all areas of my business. It's education, communication, and responsiveness. Okay. Uh, and when I say responsiveness, I mean I'll get back to you in the next 90 minutes. Um, depending of course, you know, I, I always set boundaries with people, you know, if I'm, it's a Sunday and, and I have plans, I'm not going to answer during that time. And I set that expectation with my, um, exclusive clients, but just making sure that you're, you're making yourself available. People, the fact with the videos, like really leverages my time. I average anywhere between five and six hours of video views in a, in a day mm -hmm. on all my content. In fact, right now it's about 11 hours. Last week it was 18 hours a day. Um, but I did spend about two times as much last week as I normally do. Okay. And uh, what it does is you're inadvertently prospecting these people, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're constantly showing up. They're constantly seeing you're doing things different and they can't ignore you. So when they're ready, they reach out and I don't have to get everyone right. And we really don't want to. So I got about 40,000 Rochester area locals that are engaging um, every month. I got about 6,000 people that are really engaging pretty much every week, right? And then when I think about it, I can say, well, out of that 6,000 people, if I can get 1% of them to actually give me their information and work with me, mm -hmm. that's 60 deals. Okay. So, I mean, and that's stuff that just kind of falls into place, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't need that much to, to carry the budget that, that I am. And that's why I kind of, like I said, I do step off the gas a little bit. I don't, I don't work as much. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my real passion in life is learning. Okay. Teaching. So that's really what I focus a lot of my time on. I tell you what, I'm going to invite you to, I don't know what event will be yet, but I have someone in my uh, upline at EXP. His name's Adam Bailey. And you should YouTube him. He started off his videos. He's kind of embarrassed by them. Well, not really, but I, 
a lot of people found him through those videos he was doing because no one was doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. He ended up growing his team to a top 14 team on the Wall Street Journal. Wow. Right now, his passive income stream, he, his goal is a million dollars a year, and he's probably going to hit it. But he created, he was one of the first to uh, build an ISA through Boomtown, mm -hmm. and you'll love the dude. So we do a bunch of Zoom calls, so I'm going to get you an invite because uh, yeah. you're going to love it. You're going to love this guy. You and him are very similar. <laughs> I love that. I, the YouTube stuff, I think, is is even more powerful. Not just the ads, but just having stuff for people. You know, owning that Commissions Inc. website, you know, I get a lot of people moving here from, from out of state. And being able to just be a realtor even knows how to set up Zoom calls, like what we're doing right now, exactly. can differentiate you. You know, I there's a... Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Are you using videos much for your buyers? Like, actually... Because I know I got a couple of deals just doing like taking a Zoom or a Facebook Live into a house for out of town clients. Because mm -hmm. here the market's moving fast. Yeah. So we yeah. have a 10 business day due diligence period where I don't like using that as a you haven't seen it yet, get down here for your inspections. But if you are 95%, it's going to work for your clients. Sometimes you got to be a little more aggressive in this market. Yeah, you, you have to. It, it, just to, be a person of integrity who protects their clients, right? Um, so I use uh, I use Bomb Bomb. I think I think that's kind of a must in this world at this point, right? And what I'll do is if they're an out of state buyer, I I have what I call strategic home buying consultation. Every one of my buyers will go through this before I will show them a home. Um, it, I believe that you have to have a strategy and perspective on what's working in the market before we even start looking at homes. And that really drives me up the wall when I go on showings and there's multiple showings at the same time. I see the agent open a door, stand off into a corner. I'm like, what are you doing? Like you have to be helping them. Right. But what I'll do is a conference call like this. If they're out of state. If they're in Anchorage, if they're in San Francisco, Florida, wherever they are, I'm like, okay, let's set up a, a, a 45 minute to an hour long consultation. I'll go over this. I have a PowerPoint presentation, not a big fan of PowerPoint, but okay. it's the easiest way to keep me on um, pace. When, when I actually go on my buyer appointments, it's just a single printer paper piece. And I go over that, go over agency, go over buyer rep. Then we set them up on a home search, access to properties that aren't on the MLS yet. And then we actually go out and look at properties, right? Um, so I'll do that with a Zoom call through through that too. So what it does is it also gives them the report. They can see me exactly what we're talking right now. You can see I have my box design <laughs> and then there's clothes all over here. That <laughs> um, but I mean, the idea is to, is to kind of get them familiar with seeing you. Yeah. And then when we find something, I'm like, look, I don't like doing this. I don't like just recording a video because it's not you see touching, smelling, feeling, smelling the home. But if it's a property you really, really love and we have to see it, We'll go in there. I'll take three, four short videos that are two minutes long on Bomb Bomb because I found that that's the best way to, to kind of break it up a little bit so you can see better. Um, and I'll send that off to you. If you like it, I'm going to strongly recommend that we put an inspection contingency on it. We'll do a 10 to 14 day. You find a way to get out here. We'll take a look at it. It is very difficult because we have to disclose to the listing agent A, we'll be recording the property. B, the, the buyer hasn't actually seen the property yet. Right. Yeah, that's one of the uh, issues I came up in negotiations and mm -hmm. it ended up since their house was already under contract, we were trying to hit such a tight time frame. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, we said that, listen, that's one less mortgage payment. If you do go with us and they're They're already approved. And luckily we got the deal, but boy, it was arm turning when they heard it was a video and not an actual walkthrough physically. Yeah. It, it's, but we all, we have limitations and there's, Unless you have mastered the apparition spelling and show up here in two minutes, you know, um, we're, we're just going to have to do the best we can. Well, then, and, as realtors, we got to position our clients to be in the best position. And that means, as you said, words. We have to use the words to make certain the other agent is confident in what we know we're doing. So, yeah. you know, if I didn't portray, you know, that this was going to be a done deal if we get this thing under yeah. contract you know, they would have gotten someone else. And that one came yeah. in, I don't know, it's probably about 15,000 uh, below appraisal. So right. just hit the market, we got a great price on it. So uh, we easily could have been in a multiple offer situation if we didn't have an offer in on that first day. So mm -hmm. there's no way if we wait for them to drive down 
two states that we would have had it under contract. Right. And you think about what's going on, you know, with protecting your clients overall, like if they really fall in love with something, you know, you, you got to do everything in your power to, to help them out with that. And most agents, a don't know how are comfortable on video. So they're not going to take the videos. They don't know how to do it. And they just simply don't have the know-how and it differentiates you from, I would say 80% of agents. I say 20% of agents do 80% of the business, the 80, 20 rule, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what gets you to the 20% isn't going to get you to the 1% either. So you still have to step up even more. What I found even from just using the videos with, with Facebook is I'll have listing agents who will in multiple offer situations, three times in the last six months, I've had listing agents, multiple offer situations come back to me and say, Hey, other offers at this, if you can match it, my sellers and I are more comfortable working with you because we know that your wow. clients are educated. That is awesome. It's happened three times. It actually just happened last week, worked through the inspection on Thursday. And um, I mean, it, it's simply like, I've had people come back like, look, you're seven, you're seven grand apart. I'm like, okay, tell me, well, well, tell me exactly what it is that we got to do to make it work. I'll go back to them. They'll do it. And they'll be like, well, I've, I, I know who you are. Maybe I haven't worked with you before, but I know you know what you're talking about. We'd rather work with you. And I think that's important too, because again, 20% of agents do 80% of the business. So that means 80% of agents who are doing 20% of the business don't know what they're doing. And I think that's why us as real estate agents, we, we get such a bad rap is just anything in sales in general. A lot of people get into to sales. A lot of people get into real estate because, well, if all else fails, I'll go into real estate, right? And they don't realize just how difficult it is. Right. And because they're not good at their job, it reflects poorly on all of us. There was a really great speaker. I was at a, I think it was a realtor rally here who said, it's not so much that I'm a great agent as is the rest of you just suck. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that, that really, that was really, really powerful. for me. Again, what gets you to the 20% won't get you to the 1%. Okay, so as a summary, real quick, Facebook, you've just killed it on. You're, you're, you've got a system dialed in and it's working. Yeah. I, and again, I'm still improving. There's a lot that I, I, I got, and I, I think you have to be that way. You know, um, I, I follow the 12 week year quite a, quite a bit. If you ever read that book, it's a really, really Our good accountability book. group talks about that all the time. Yep. I just, did, I, I just did a new one last night from the next 12 weeks, you know, working on, you know, my, listing pack i got to re-record my my listing presentation because it's six months old now um, i like what you said about adam earlier about he's like don't look at my first several videos because i was the exact same exact same way and i had i i have, I have the reference i don't know exactly what they were doing but there was a study done i think they were making like toy houses or something uh -huh. and what they were doing is they told group a to spend um as much time as possible designing this toy house and then building it, right? So they spent 80% of their time designing it, 20% of the time building it. And then they told group B to um, determine what they're gonna build and build as many of those houses as possible, right? So they spent 20% of their time designing it and 80% actually building it. Group two or group B made a much better home and a lot more of them. And the reason was is because they made the mistakes necessary to decide, okay, well, hey, that didn't work. We're going to move a little bit more closer to this target. Okay, that didn't work. Let's do this. Hey, this was a good idea. Let's try that. And they started getting better and better. That's why just starting is more important than, than trying to, to perfect that paralysis from analysis, the perfection mindset. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, and again, it's one of those things like I'll look at videos from like three, four months ago, even, which at the time I was like, man, the videos, you know, six, seven months ago were awful. These ones are great. And now I'm looking back at things three, four months ago. I'm like, oh man, now, now, do you have the exact same thing forever. Do you have those all on YouTube or those are strictly, you just uploaded them to Facebook? Some are on YouTube. Some aren't. Um, it just depends on, on what I'm, when I'm running out there. I got videos on Facebook right now that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. Again, YouTube's one of those new things I'm approaching. I think it's a really good tool, especially even in just the organic form. Yeah, because you, you get more evergreen content right there. And yeah. that would be interesting to find out. Like I have a lot of, most of my videos don't have many views at all. Like I'll spend the time tagging them. And then I got one that has 1700 views and it was just me walking through a house. And you know, that's just what I do for a lot of my clients. I don't try to edit it. I don't try to make it look beautiful. I say, mm -hmm. this is the flow, you know, this is what you're going to see. So you don't have to worry about it being, you know, changed where it's bluer and greener and you know, sure. <laughs> the lighting's perfect. It's just, this is the flow of the house. If it works, let's get inside it. 
Mm -hmm. And YouTube is the, is the number two search engine in the, in the world owned by the number one search engine in the world. So when you post something on YouTube, if you do the, the captions or you do the transcriptions and include that and put it into a page post, SEO, Google optimize, it shows up at the top of the page and people do that. And people who are moving to your area, they'll, they'll type in, you know, moving to Rochester, Minnesota. Well, hey, there's a video out there that says moving to Rochester, Minnesota. Let's click on that. Oh, he's got more videos. Let's take a look at that. Oh, we should talk to this guy. And I you want know. you to keep me updated on your YouTube success because, well, one thing I've noticed, Facebook, for some reason, I've not gotten dialed in. Google, I've been doing, man, for a long time. Then I went to Bing, and Bing was like half the price of Google. Well, ever since Facebook has taken off in the last, eight, say, 18 months, my Google has gone down a lot in pay-per-click. So Google is smart enough to know, hey, we're losing advertising dollars to Facebook, so they're overcorrecting right now. So uh, with your videos being so polished, having them out there on Google, putting them in front of YouTube, that's why I asked about your competitors. You can choose competitors to put your ads in front of. Mm -hmm. And you could choose all the realty companies in your town, and you could be an ad in front of every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And I, I do pay attention to what some of the competition's doing. They usually have one image ad out at out of a time. You know, so what I'll do is I'll have, there's one out there and I don't fault them for doing this because, hey, it gets the phone ringing. But it's one out there that's like, hey, you can buy before you sell by doing our move up program for whatever. I'm sure there's an additional um, commission involved there or some sort of okay. they're buying directly. And then I got something out there, a video that's like, hey, don't be misled. This is actually the better route to go. So <laughs> like and 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 what it does is it builds more about credibility and just being straight up honest and transparent with people like look you can do it that way you can do it that way it does exist here's why it, it costs you more money it's the same thing that i have conversation with people about wholesalers and i buyers and for sale by owners it's just another way to market your home and you know what if you're worried about i buyers coming in that's more of a problem on you than it is on uh, on 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 any of the entire market overall it's another alternative yeah. And you tell people, look, you should have all of your options. If you go with the iBuyer movement, it's going to be significantly below market value. There's probably going to be some additional fees involved, but there's a cost for that convenience, right? And have you, Is Zillow in your community yet? Um, so there is one in Minnesota. Rochester is not as big of a city as, you know, it's a 242nd largest city in the nation, but it, it's only, a, in my territory, is about 250,000 people. So they're not really making a big step in here yet. I do see Redfin a little bit. Um, there is a, uh, a team that works with Zillow. They got one agent that will come in and do the Zillow offers. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's just another way to get business even. In fact, if you just start working with wholesalers, you might, if you've got someone who's an investor who's willing to buy properties from someone below market value and that seller wants to sell, that's a value you offer to your seller clients, mm -hmm. right? Now you might not get the full commission. You might just get it over from the seller, but Hey, you're not marketing. You're not doing anything like that. You're just you know, helping out with the transaction, mm -hmm. you know, but being that person who's like, look, hey, you have all of your options. I'll be completely transparent with you. You know, you can go the for sale by owner route or you can do it the I buyer route, but if you want it done right and you want your home to out position all the competition and you want to get in front of the most people, which means more feet in the door and higher offers and more money in your pocket, then I got something great to share with you. 